Football battles, baby. Football battles, baby. And remember, guys, man, two exclusive football battles. Become a Patreon member, man. If you're a first team Patreon member, supporting your boy, keeping your boy that support that I thank you for, you get exclusive football battles. I think loads of excuses in there as well. So I think the last one I did was Rooney Henry. So become a Patreon member and gain access to those exclusive football battles. But this are for the YouTube fan, baby. Um, and of course, PK and your boy Van Dyke. PK and your boy Van Dyke, man. So we get it. This is two points. So new, new era football battles. And it's what we're running about, man. So first up, talent. Who was more talented? Or rather, who's more talented? More and everything, because obviously PK is retired. Um, so remember, I like, I like to take guys at their best. And it was busy. So when we do all these attributes, it's taking you at your best before we get to L's, which is taking you at your, at your worst. Two very talented defenders. Two really talented defenders. But I feel this dude, what made him unique were the extra things that he was a able to do. And the, beyond just being just a very good defender, were just those extras that he had. Specifically, those extras is what made him perfect for the team that he played in. So both talented defenders, both talented, but when you just look at overall talents and just what they were able to bring, don't even excuse your boy, your boy. Nah, 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 nah. Actually, no, no, it's your boy, it's your boy, it's your boy, it's your boy. It's no, it's the peep, it's the peep, <laughs> Um, I think because what's, remember, because the guys are their best. What made PK so good was, okay, reading of the game, tackling, positioning, anticipation, but to carry the ball, to move forward with the ball, to carry the ball into mid midfield, to be able to pass the ball, to be able to be confident on, on, on the ball and to be able to not lose possession even when you've been handed by the press. So at the core, he was a very good footballer. This is similar to what made Desai so unique, what made Rio so unique. Now, I don't, I'm not saying that um, PK is like that, but it's in that same vein of what made Desai such a rare talent and why Milan bought him from Marseille because of the extras he also had on being a great defender and why there was so much of a big deal made about Rio Ferdinand. Um, so, which, again, that's something that I mentioned when I, do, when, I, when I did my Rio versus Ramos battle for you patron peeps out there. So I just, so again, Van Dyke amazing, but I just didn't, I don't, I don't think that Van Dyke had the extras and the extra attributes that made him as unique as PK, because really what PK was specific for that team was, okay, this is another modern def defender. And these are now the tools that the modern defender is going to, will require to really be at that elite supreme level. So for that, I just feel like you're just based on a, on talent, talent, I'm giving it to your boy PK. Impact. Who's more impactful? Um, I don't want to say this is easy, but this is obvious. I think that they were both impactful in their own ways, but one guy was supremely impactful, where his impact greatly changed his team. And his impact was so big, it finally reminded us that, oh yeah, defenders do matter. You know? So, again, it's obvious, it's Van, it's Van Dyke. Because I think for, for PK, of course PK had his own impact, but look at the team, look at the system, and look at how much pressing your team is doing. So I just think that he was good, but he just fit, fitted into what that kind of dynamic was created by Pep. Van Dijk joined Liverpool, it changed the freaking team. And what Van Dijk reminded us of was why Milan tried to, took Desai from Marseille because of how they knew it would impact their, their team why Maldini was such a big deal for AC Milan, why Cannavaro was voted best player at that World Cup for Italy in 06. Because when Vance van Dijk came in, Liverpool changed. 
the entire team team sheet. They didn't concede goals. Like those all those goals that they considered not concede goals because you have to understand that winning a match is two things. You've got to score goals, hundred percent. But you can score two goals if you concede four, you lose the game. So yes, it's scoring goals, but it's also trying not to concede. So if you now have a defender coming in that's now saying that no, we're not going to concede. So if you score, we we win the game. Score two goals, win the game, and that is what's made the Milan sides of like Arrigo Saki so huge. Because those guys were like, just striker. We just needed to score one goal. Score one one goal. We are we are winning one zero. Score score two goals. Oh my gosh, easy money. At worst, it's, it's going to be two one. But it's going to be two zero. So Van Dijk's impact on Liverpool was pro- profound, profound, and a lot of their success, specifically that ninety nine point season, it was down to just Van Dijk's defending because it's not only his. It's two things. This is the two things the defender would do. So it's not only his defending as an individual, but what do you do as a defender? You are, it's like you're a general of like a regiment, like a leader of a regiment. And your regiments are those three other guys. Your defensive partner, the left back, the right back, and to an extent the keeper as well because you are commanding. Offside tribe, guys, push up, push up, push up, go back, corner kick, mark your man. So he was the leader of that defense. And remember, his instructions is what the right back, left back, or the central defender are all listening to. So Van Dijk's impact was, was profound. It was huge, huge, huge. And I think he reminded guys that a great defender, just like a great striker, just like a great midfielder can greatly impact your team. Adapt. Who best can adapt to different pos- positions? Um. You see, I think the, the whole adapt thing can sort of overlap with talent because it's sort of like, okay, you can... See, so you you you, you take a, de, a defender because I think this attribute is mainly for when I do defenders. So you take a central defender. Can he be a sweeper? Can he maybe go into DM? Heck, can he go left back? Can he go right back? So I feel that based on just the profile of PK and what he was able to do, I do feel that he was could probably be much more adaptable than Van Dyke. I think for Van, for Van Dyke, great central de- de- defender. Could he play DM? P- possibly. Possibly. Could he play right back, left back? I'm not sure. I think PK... Now, maybe not supremely well. You could put him right back. You can put him left back. You could put him DM. He could walk supremely well. I think he walks supremely well. And then I think his talents, because of the kind of attributes he was able to have, lends him to be able to adapt to different kind of situations. So as a manager, if you were to flip the formation, okay, I want to go to a, a back three. I want to go maybe to a back four. I want to maybe move you around or maybe move you a lot higher. I think Piki could be a lot more malleable in that sense than, let's say, someone like a Van Dyke. So, that's my, my, my thing there, man. Um, so, now we get to L's. It's, it's where it gets real. <laughs> it's, where, it's where it gets real. Um, this, is, this is obvious. Remember, this is taking you guys at your worst. Now, one guy, does he have any L's? Okay, maybe it was that that warning game. Mm, yeah. So when you look at things, here's the thing. Piki at his best was amazing, superb, and he was well heralded and everything. Piki at his worst, he he was directing traffic. He was directing traffic, and he became a meme. So I don't think Van Dyke now now okay, okay hold up hold up hold up there is a Van Disney meme that does exist there and I forgot who it was where there was let me comment below where there was a player that made Van Van Dyke do the a Macarena 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 a Macarena hey there was someone that made Van Dyke do hula hoops where he, I think he was doing like like this basically he was doing they made him break dance so that was an L PK's L's are. They are they are legendary, like that's directing traffic in that game against Inter. That's legendary. 
holding on to Mbappe and Mbappe just clowning him, that is legendary. So, corner taken quickly, where, and this was when they were both on the, on the, on the pitch, corner taken quickly, PK was one of those clowns who were just standing there, not fully aware that a, that a corner was about to be taken early. <laughs> so, yeah, PK's L's are bad. Again, PK had his best boom. PK had his worst. Nasty. <laughs> Supremely, amazingly nasty. It was nasty for him. Nasty. Um, so, 1v1. Um, I feel that... Um, Who is better in a 1v1 situaciones? 1v1 situaciones. Um, possibly both good defenders. Both really good defenders. But I feel I would trust this guy more so in a 1v1 situation because I believe he was the smarter defender. And I just believe that's just based on just pure defending. You see, 1v1 is pure defending. Because, you know, sort of, you know, whenever you play, I don't know whether you guys, you play like World Cup singles, where there's a keeper and then just game one, 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 one against one. So when it's a 1v1 situation, so the attack against the defender, that's not pure de de defending, where you're not going to get past me. And I know you're going to go right, you're going to go left, you're going to do like a step over, you're going to faint, you're going to do like a, a dummy and I can anticipate that and I'm going to win the ball off of you. So there is nothing, there is no purer demonstration of how good a defender is than how they are in a 1v1 situation. And for that, good boy. Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's it's Van Dyke. It's Van Dyke. Um, I think that PK, good defender. The thing was, how many 1v1 situations did PK have to, to be in? Based on Barca's aggressive pressing and how they wanted to retrieve the ball as quickly as possible, he really didn't have to be in those many 1v1 situations, both for either Spain or for Barcelona. But for Van Dijk, now people say, oh, he used to back away, back away, back away. That's just him being smart. Because yes, he did used to back away, but he knew when to back away enough and then just to pounce when he needed to pounce. So Van Dijk, he was smart. He knew that, no, there's no any reason to jump into the tackle. There's no reason to really dispossess, read this situation. Read the situation and decide when, okay, I can back away and I can get help. Or back away, no one's coming to help, go through. And there are many times when, no, again, there are those rare moments where the defender can get clowned like Van Dijk has. But many situations, I see Van Dijk just being very smart. Being patient, being composed, and knowing when to now deliver the tackle and make that tackle. So in a 1v1 situation, I would trust Van Dijk's judgment to know when to make the tackle a lot more so than your boy Gerard Pique. So he, he gets that. Resume. <laughs> So what do I say about resume? I always have to remind you guys, there's an Abeloa tax on resume. So let's say it was Abeloa against Forlan. Bro, Abeloa has a walk up, he has a Euro, he has a, like a UCL. Forlan beats him. Do you know why? Forlan's contribution to that Copa America beats Abeloa's bandwagon self. So all because you have those trophies means nothing. What did you contribute to those trophies? So for Hazard, his UCL doesn't count. No, the list is everything, but the Hazard's UCL doesn't count because he contributed nothing to that. So um, this, so when you look at resume, it's obvious. Like this, this, this is obvious here. This is obvious because PK was a very, very very important parts of that's of Barca's successes. So whether it was the UCL, the La Liga titles, the Copa del Rey, the treble, he was very important. Very, very important. And because that was a team. And based on how the team played, how they're able to defend, obviously a lot of focus was on Messi, Javi, Iniesta, um, Pedro, Edso. A lot of focus on them, Dani Alves. 
But when you just look at the team and how they played, especially with what was required of the defenders over 90 minutes, you PK played his part and played his role. So, and again, it is, it's a, it's a two flex, you know? So I think even if, see, even if we just left it by a club, I'd still add it to, to PK, but how, why this is just not even a conversation is the two flex because it's Barca and it's Spain. And he was very important for Spain and that's World Cup. Was he in 08? Come on, was he in 08? Because I know he was, I, think, I believe he was in, 20, in 2012. Yeah, he was in 2012. He was in 2010. Was he in 08? But yeah. He, he said he said he said what's up for Spain and for Barca and for Van Dijk again huge for Liverpool. So whether it's the 99 point season in the league up against Man City, which is great in and of itself, the UCL as well, but for Netherlands, so so we're all square. Legacy. Who has the greatest le le legacy? Here's the thing. I don't want to just say this is easy, but looking at the dynamics of their teams, there is a clear answer here. I think they have, both have amazing legacies based on just what they did and their impact in their own rights as defenders. But this is individual against individual. So who has the better legacy as an individual? as an individual. It's your boy. Nah, it's your boy. So look, the reason why I'm gonna give it to PK, nope, 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 it's, it's, it's Van Dijk. <laughs> I'll, I'll just give it to you. You see, why I can't give it to PK is your legacy is tied to the team. And just the unfortunate reality is even if you played a role, he played a massive role. The team really, the focus was really, it was Messi, it was Iniesta, it was Javi, Eto. So those are the guys that really was, the guys that really said what's up. Everybody plays their role, but the guys that really elevated that team were those guys. So his legacy is tied to team. It's tied to how good that Barca team was, how good that Spain team was. For Van Dijk, when the dust settles and we look at that Liverpool team and we look at the 99 points and we look at the UCL final, Van Dijk is a major part of that. Like Van Dijk is a major part of that. As much as, so we just think, look at that team and just think, okay, who, who, who are the players that stand out? It's Salah and it's Van Dijk. Obviously, Mane, huge, but really it's Van Dijk, it's Salah. And Van Dijk had a profound impact on those team successes. You know, like the, the unfortunate thing is just Man City's dominance. Because you take Man City away, that team wins, what, three, four Premier League titles, throwing a UCL in there. And now, ha, what are we even talking about Van Dijk? So I just think that when you look at the Barca team, it's, that, it's the Barca team, it's the Spain team. When you look at that Liverpool team, yeah, it's the team, it's club. But a lot of it is Van Dyke. And and basically, Van Dyke's footprints are a lot more prevalent in the Liverpool team than PK's footprints on the Barca team. And I think when all is said and done, people are like, bro, Van Dyke was a major reason why that Liverpool team was so successful. And when you just look at see, I don't think Van neither guy is an all time defender. When you look at all time defenders, it's your boy Soram, it's Nesta, it's Maldini, it's Cannavaro. It's Baresi, it's Desai. You know, those are your all-time de de defenders. But in terms of generational, oh, these guys are generational. But I just feel like if Van Dyke's is a much more of a generational talent as a defender, and then let's say PK was. So I just feel like if Van Dyke's legacy, what did it, it's gonna be a lot more similar. So guys, that's it for football battles. Remember, guys, more exclusive football battles are available if you become a Patreon member. So, spot your boy and become a Patreon member. So, guys, tell me what you think about the comments. You agree, disagree, and what football battles do you want to see next week? Hopefully, this will be done every Friday. But just tell me, give me ideas of any other football battles that you want to see. Put them in the comments below and tell me what you think. Peace out, stay true, stay black. Think about becoming a Patreon member. 
click the link below in the description box or head over to patreon.com forward slash half hope and gain access to more content crap. Let's ride.